So your team hired a brand new AI data scientist. Your whole group is super excited about all the cool new stuff your company is going to be able to do. Well, except for your hardware engineering group. They aren't so happy <laughs> because, you see, these two groups, even though they need to work together, don't generally speak the same languages. I mean, they may be on the same planet, but definitely different countries at this point. <laughs> so how do we get our AI universe into our chip universe? High-level synthesis. But how are we going to do that? Maybe your hardware team knows HLS, maybe they don't. How are we going to bridge this huge expanse? Well, I might just have the answer. I know, I have all the answers. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. No, I don't have all the answers, but I may have a solution to get your project from TensorFlow into RTL. So your new fangled AI scientist can finally talk to those hardware guys in the corner. <laughs> in this episode of Chalk Talk, I sit down with Dave Apta from Cadence Design Systems and talk about this very thing. We're chatting about how you can get your AI models into System C, C++, or RTL with a little help from Stratus HLS. All right, let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Stratus high-level synthesis from Cadence Design Systems. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. So most of the product teams I talk to are integrating AI into their designs these days. And sometimes that means taking AI models all the way down to custom hardware. Dave, are you seeing that as well? Yes. And, you know, as you know, most of the AI designs start with an abstract TensorFlow or CAFE model. You know, most of the time you might want to leave that as a CPU or GPU based software only model. But sometimes you need the performance of custom hardware because that gives you the best performance per energy spent solving your problem. And so this is especially important for edge devices like battery powered sensors that are often dedicated to a single task, but they do need to run an AI network. And so you want to find the best solution for these kinds of custom hardware applications. Okay, so if I'm looking to design a machine learning design the edge, Dave, what kind of design challenges do I need to keep an eye out for? So as I just mentioned, these applications can be very sensitive to power or area, et cetera. And so you want to find the best solution that you can have for your given application. And so you want to be able to explore multiple algorithms and not only just explore them for the performance of the mathematics, but also for the performance of the hardware. Sure. Which means you want to be able to measure the area the power and maybe for the neural network and the accuracy of your network. And you want to be able to do all that very quickly because, of course, your competitors are also trying to do the same thing. So what you want to do is explore different architectures, try to implement them in different ways and figure out what's the best for you. And Stratus HLS, the high level synthesis solution, provides all of these capabilities as we will see today. Okay, so it seems like there is this big gap between our data scientists or AI folks working in environments like TensorFlow and our digital hardware experts. Can you tell me a bit more about how this all works and how exactly do we get from AI models to System C or C++ or even RTL? Right. TensorFlow, of course, is a Python-based framework and it has a very large library of functions so you can model your neural network very, very quickly. You can train the network in the same framework, but there's no real path to hardware implementation. So it runs on the CPU and the GPU, and that's it. Stratus HLS is a proven path to highly optimized RTL with excellent quality of results. Most of the major semiconductor companies are using it for production, and it gives you a flexible, reusable hardware IP, starting with IEEE 1666 System C. So System C is a hardware description language written in C++, and that's the input to Stratus, along with your technology and some design constraints. And what Stratus HLS will do is take that System C code and turn that into optimized RTL, 
And integrated with Stratus is the Genus Synthesis Solution and the Joules RTL Power Solution so that you can measure the quality of this RTL in the same environment. And we'll go walk through all of that in the example. Okay, Dave, it seems like HLS can bridge part of this gap for us. How do we get from something like TensorFlow into HLS? Right. So there are several steps. We'll start with the TensorFlow design. You are going to create your network in TensorFlow and train it, and you're going to extract the model metadata, the result of the training, the weights and bias values. And then we are going to implement the same models, for example, operations like conf2d or max pool in system C, and these models will be parameterized, and they're going to use the same metadata, the weights and biases that were the result of training. And so you can create the same network in system C using these steps. And then you're going to verify the network and check to make sure that it meets your performance criteria. And if it doesn't, you can change the parameters to explore the trade-offs so that ultimately you want to be able to make a claim that this design is so much better than this version versus this configuration versus this implementation. And this kind of trade-off analysis is very difficult to do in the traditional RTL flow. Okay, so Dave, I think I understand the steps, but do you have an example of what this would look like in the real world? Yes. So what we're going to talk about today is a convolutional neural network that recognizes handwritten digits. So this is a standard test called the modified MNIST image recognition test. There are data sets for training and testing, and the input is a small image that represents a picture of a handwritten digit like you will see in a check deposit application, for example. And the output is 10 numbers, the output of the neural network, and the 10 numbers are the probabilities of the digits. So the highest number is the recognized digit. And so this is a standard application that can be done multiple ways. And in our example, we have chosen a specific implementation in TensorFlow and then taken it out to RTL. Okay. So that looks like a typical AI example I'd see. But what does the neural network look like for that? So here is uh, the neural network itself. This is TensorFlow code, and it is part of the example you can download. There are different operations. There are essentially six computational layers. There are two 2D multi-channel convolution layers and two max pooling layers and two dense layers, or what are called fully connected layers. And these layers start with the image as an input at one layer, and then they feed the data through into the final layer, which outputs the 10 numbers. The network is trained using standard TensorFlow operations, and the result is a set of weights and biases. Okay, so we've got our six layer CNN and our Python, but HLS doesn't just synthesize Python into RTL, does it? Uh, no, that would be nice. It would be. Uh, it, is, it is not there yet. Uh, so what we are going to do is link the TensorFlow model to an HLS model or to create an HLS model that is equivalent to the TensorFlow model. And it's actually fairly easy to do if you want to do it in System C because, for example, the TensorFlow operations like conf2d or max pool are analogous to hardware modules written in IEEE 1666 System C. And so you can take an operation in a TensorFlow and create a module for it in System C. The connections between those operations, what are called the graph in the TensorFlow, and the variables that go between them, the actual tensors themselves, are basically hardware I.O. interfaces in the System C environment. And so you can build these modules with the correct interfaces to implement the network. And then finally, a TensorFlow session is like running a System C simulation. So you can take a bunch of test cases and pass it through the network and look at the output and make sure that it works correctly. Wow, okay. So we are mapping our TensorFlow into System C. Can you show me how this works and looks? So this example here shows some of the code and the corresponding System C code. So in TensorFlow, there are functions like conf2d or maxpool2d, et cetera. And then in System C, there'll be a module with the same name in our example, which defines the IO interface and the threads, and then defines the algorithm. So the conf2d module in System C implements the conf2d function as it is done in the TensorFlow function. 
the modules are written as C++ templates because just like the TensorFlow functions take parameters, you want these modules to be parameterizable. So you want to be able to do things like different data types, different functional parameters, and architectural parameters. And so it's easy to do this with C++ templates. So now once we're in System C, it looks like there's an enormous range of hardware architecture decisions to make, Dave. Yes, and that's actually a very standard thing that you do in designing hardware. So going from TensorFlow, where you have a software function that accepts an entire tensor, to hardware, where you don't really have the ability to shove an entire image into a hardware module, right? you need to make a decision as to how to do this I.O. So you have different choices like streaming interfaces, memory interfaces, bus interfaces, line buffers, and so on and so forth. You can have memory storage, register storage, affects how the network performs. Sometimes you might want to change the code a little bit to make sure that it performs the way you want to. And so it's not just a straightforward one-to-one flow, but you do need to make some decisions. And then we help you make these decisions by providing some IP with uh, Stratus. Cool. Okay. So let's say I've got my data flow basically figured out. How do I get this into HLS? So you would write the system C modules. As I said, each module in the project corresponds to one TensorFlow function. And then you use settings uh, to define the characteristics of each instance. There are different variations that you can do. And then in the Stratus environment, you have multiple HLS configurations so that you can take the same module in System C, let's say a Conf2D module, one of the layers of the network, and create different RTL implementations, which have different characteristics. For example, you have different latencies, which result in different areas, so that you have some very fast uh, blocks or maybe a slow block, and you can do the trade-off analysis by synthesizing these from the same System C code. So how do I go about doing this? Right. So uh, what you would do is, as I said, the C++ modules are parameterized and you just vary the parameters. And so each module is configured with a class that defines constants that are used by the design. So there are some parameters that come from TensorFlow, like the size of your tensor or the shape of the filters that are used by the Con2D module. Additional settings are hardware specific, like what are the bit widths of your data types? Because in TensorFlow, everything is floating point, but in hardware, you don't really want floating point hardware. You want to use, say, fixed point types or integer types. And so these are also part of the settings mechanism for the System C module. Okay. So let's talk about verification a little bit, Dave. It seems like this design flow challenges our usual verification methodology. Yes, and actually some of it is easier to do in the HLS flow because of the features that Stratus HLS provides. So in the HLS flow, uh, we think of verification at three different levels. The first level is verifying the algorithm itself. We have taken the TensorFlow into System C, but we want to make sure that it produces the same results, works the same way as the TensorFlow model, of course. And at this point, we are only simulating the System C original input. The design engineer would write a system C test bench, and that test bench can be exactly the same as the tests that you're doing with your TensorFlow network. So you will take the same 10,000 images in this environment and pass them through your system C module and make sure that it works correctly. That's what we would call algorithm verification. Once you do that, you run Stratus HLS and get RTL. And you can verify this RTL using the same exact test bench. It's basically a push button flow. And what you find in the RTL environment, in the RTL simulation, is things like latency and throughput. You measure those, uh, of course, because the system C doesn't have the same latency. And then you can take the RTL and send it through logic synthesis to get an estimate of the area and timing, or send it through power estimation to get an estimate of the power, and also make sure that the RTL is producing the same results as uh, the system C model. And then once you have done all this work, you can choose a specific RTL and give it to you, the rest of your team to verify in the overall chip. And so that's basically just going into the standard RTL verification and synthesis flow. And the Stratus RTL output is designed for that. Okay, so let's start with that algorithm verification you first mentioned. Specifically in the case of, say, a neural network, 
algorithm verification has a couple of aspects. So the first thing is to verify the network functional performance, meaning the accuracy of the system C model. In the RAK, we will send the same tests that were used on the TensorFlow model into the system C model and measure how many are correctly recognized. And so there will be a difference in the accuracy between the TensorFlow implementation and the system C implementation because we are not using floating point types. We are using fixed point types, and this will change the accuracy, typically will decrease the accuracy. You can do trade-offs. So in this example, we have done trade-offs of 16-bit hardware down to 12-bit hardware and measure the accuracy of each implementation and compare it with the original TensorFlow implementation. And you get to decide as the system engineer what is acceptable because the trade-off of this is not just the bit width, but also power and area, as you will see. Sure. Okay, so let's say it's doing what I want, and now I want to continue on to a detailed RTL design and simulation. What next? So in the Stratus HLS environment, that's basically a push button. So when you tell Stratus to synthesize each system C module to RTL, you also tell Stratus what is the target technology and the clock period, and also a lot of constraints that you can tell, like for example, pipelining or latency constraints or memory mapping differences and so on. And uh, Stratus will synthesize the RTL for every module and then create a simulation using the same test bench used for the functional verification that we just talked about. And so this RTL simulation will verify your network performance, like latency and throughput, and also make sure that it produces the same results as the input to Stratus, which is the System C model. These uh, simulations are also used for power analysis. So at this point, you have done a functional simulation and verification and also created RTL and verified that it is functionally correct. And the next step is to measure the performance of this RTL in terms of power and so on and to give you the best choice. Okay, so the whole reason I'm doing this is to have my AI model running in a very tight constraints for power, performance, and area. How do I know, Dave, if I'm hitting my goals? So for that, you use measurement using tools, that cadence tools, rather than just guesswork or, say, previous experience. And so uh, Stratus HLS includes integrations with Genus, the logic synthesis solution, and Jules, the power measurement solution. And so you just have push button integrations that you can run. So you have created, for example, all these different RTLs. Each one of those has a different area and timing and different power consumption. And you can set up a simulation to run all of those or set up multiple simulations to run all of those through these uh, tools and measure and get the actual area numbers and the timing numbers and the power numbers so that you can make an intelligent decision. And we call this design exploration. And so in the traditional RTL flow, you may not have time to do this. Right. That's the, one of the very big advantages of HLS. But if you're writing RTL by hand, you have to kind of make these choices early because it takes a long time to create the RTL. And so you may only have time for one or maybe two experiments. But in the Stratus HLS flow, it is very, very easy to change the constraints or the algorithm for exploration because it's all high-level code. And so there is time to try many different points of exploration. And what that gives you is a better chance to find the best architecture. And the best architecture may not be the same one for different applications. So you might take the same network and implement it in a very power-efficient but maybe slow hardware or implemented in a faster hardware that might take a little bit more power but gives you the performance that you need. The Stratus HLS uh, will tell you what is the power and the area for this implementation versus the power and the area for that implementation, and then you can do the trade-off analysis. Okay, so Dave, walk me through exactly what this means. So this table here is from our example that you can download where we have created a, a network in TensorFlow and then implemented multiple bit widths using fixed point types for the hardware implementation in System C. So we did an analysis of 12 bits through 16 bits of bit width of the core data type used in the design. And then for each of those bit widths, we did a fast implementation, a medium implementation, and a slow implementation in terms of latency. 
So that means that the fast implementation can do, say, 6,000 images per second, and the medium one about 2,500, and the slow about 250, which is a big difference in performance. But the correspondingly, there is a difference in power, and there's a difference in area, and a difference in accuracy based on the bit width. Sure. And so at the end of all these experiments is a table that tells you that this design using 13 bits as the data type is about 20% smaller and 15% more power efficient. It does have a loss of accuracy, but it's only about 0.6%. And so you can decide if that's acceptable or not. And so that saves you area and power. The key thing to take away from this is that you are doing experiments and doing measurement rather than guesswork in terms of finding the best architecture. And that's the one of the biggest advantages of using HLS for design. Okay, Dave. So can you walk me through what we've discussed here on getting from TensorFlow through HLS down to custom hardware? So AI ML applications are, of course, first defined in a framework like TensorFlow. And if you want to implement these in hardware, you would like to do that in an as efficient hardware as possible or the best implementation for your needs. And to be able to do that, you need some metrics. Also, you want to implement this hardware as quickly as possible. And so Cadence provides a straightforward high-level synthesis flow to go from TensorFlow to custom hardware that meets your targets. And Stratus HLS enables you to do these trade-offs of power, performance, area, and accuracy, and finding the best application. So this example that we have uh, walked through today You can download it from our uh, Stratus HLS website, which is on our support website here in Cadence. So uh, please check it out, download it. It has both the TensorFlow code and the System C model. You can run it yourself, experiment with it, and see how Stratus HLS will help you build the best AI network possible. Excellent. Well, Dave, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Stratus HLS from Cadence Design Systems. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.